Well, good evening, good morning. Thank you very much for having me as part of New York Arbitration Week. This question of who is in charge is a question that often looms large, of course, in questions of adjudicative jurisdiction. Specifically, it arises when one has a contest over which adjudicative body has authority conclusively to decide which issue. It's a very topical issue in Australia. It's presently pending before a number of our courts, one of which is our highest court, the High Court of Australia. That's what this video is about, the proceedings that are known as the Kingdom of Spain and Infrastructure Services Luxembourg. These proceedings involve an application for the recognition, potentially also enforcement, of an award to which the Washington Convention or ICSID Convention applies. Spain has claimed foreign state immunity. In the proceedings below, it made its, its claim for immunity on quite a narrow basis. It never put in issue, at least at first instance, whether it had ever consented to arbitration. But now in the proceedings before the High Court, things have become slightly more complicated and certainly more expansive. The European Commission has sought leave to appear as amicus curiae, a friend of the court, to make submissions which put in issue whether Spain ever validly consented or could validly have consented to the arbitration of the underlying dispute. The European Commission's argument is that the relevant provisions of the Energy Charter Treaty, the ECT, cannot, by reference to two decisions of the European Court of Justice, ever validly have supplied the consent of Spain. And as a result of that, there's no ability in this case to yoke together any consent under the ECT with the provisions of the ICSID Convention to found a waiver of immunity by Spain to the jurisdiction of Australian courts in recognition and enforcement proceedings. Now, you can see that there's, there is a rising here some sort of contest between the role of the arbitral tribunal in the first place to determine its own jurisdiction and, and in particular whether there has been consent by a respondent state to arbitrate. On the other hand, there is the role of the Australian court to determine as part of a foreign state immunity um, issue in recognition and enforcement proceedings whether there has been a waiver of a foreign state's immunity to the jurisdiction of an Australian court. Now, the European Commission seeks to say there isn't really a contest here. One body, the arbitral tribunal, is determining the limits of its jurisdiction, whether it, whether it has jurisdiction to conduct the arbitration. Then another, arbit uh, another adjudicative body here, the Federal Court of Australia, is simply deciding questions of waiver. They're separate and distinct, according to the European Commission. It is a very interesting argument. And if one is worried about having a direct contest between the adjudicative roles of different adjudicative bodies, it may provide one neat way of resolving what is apparently a contest. But in pragmatic terms, of course, there is of course a contest going on here. In both questions of jurisdiction, whether it's about the jurisdiction of the arbitral body or the jurisdiction of the Federal Court of Australia, an essential element to the question of jurisdiction is the question of whether the foreign state consented to the arbitration. Well, that leads to the question, does this matter if there is a contest going on here between who has authority conclusively to decide? Or does it matter if each have authority to determine within the limits of their own jurisdiction the answer to that question? It may depend on what one what the perspective one brings as to whether one thinks it is a good or a bad thing to have this kind of contest. If one starts from the premise of the ICSID system being a closed loop system with all the intention that it could provide a convenient and efficient means of resolving investor state disputes, then it might be possible to think that some conflict, some diffusion of, of who is in charge is a bad thing because it might be said it undermines the essential premise of the whole of the, whole of the Washington Convention. From the perspective of local courts and states, though, it might be more nuanced. The exercise of judicial power in a local court hierarchy is generally not a rubber stamp. And generally, local courts would look to whether there has been an excess of jurisdiction by another body before giving any imprimatur of its own authority to the orders, um, uh, to the orders or enforcement of the decisions of another body. And that goes to questions of state consent. Here, one might say that in signing up to arbitration, there is always a limit. And the questions of the limits of consent is something that should always be able to be determined at the relevant stages of the proceedings. 
or at least it should be something that local courts should be concerned with before they allow a foreign state to be impleted, um, impleted in proceedings before them. Now, the Australian proceedings obviously haven't provided an answer to this so far, and it remains to be seen whether they will in circumstances where Spain itself did not raise this issue below. Whatever is the result of that, these proceedings are currently a very neat demonstration of the possibility that there is a contest and the different ways that if one needs to resolve the contest, it can be resolved by saying that these, th these adjudicative bodies are essentially deciding different questions, not undermining or contradicting each other. Enjoy the rest of the week.